Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name's John Finch. Today we're going to look deeper into our second brain, into our photographic notebook that we're putting together. And we're going to start to link things together. Now this is a big step because it's taking us from starting to enter data to actually linking the data together. And it's when we link and interlink the data that it starts to become very useful. That, after all, is how our brains work. So let's get on the computer and let's have a look. And this is how I left you last week. We built an index with two links, photographs and darkroom. And underneath, in photographs, we had a list, didn't we, of every photograph that was tagged with the tag photograph. Today we're going to then look at how we can start to link things together. And first of all, I want to just go to this photograph of Castle Rig here. So there's what we had last week. And if you remember, we were playing around and we added this photograph underneath, which is a link to one on my hard disk. Well, I want to keep that photograph in my Tiddly Wiki file, but um, I don't want it here, it shouldn't be part of this Castle Rig picture. So let's see how we can do that. And it's called excising. I can excise or remove this selected text from this tiddler Castle Rig and create a new tiddler at the same time from it. And to do that, I use this button here. This is the excise button. If I hover my mouse over it, you'll see a little help pop up to tell me what it does. Basically, by clicking this, it's going to pull this out and create a new tiddler. Let's do it. I click on it. It asks me for the title of the new tiddler. Logie House. It says, do I want to tag it? No, I don't. And I'm going to just put a link where it used to be. So perform excision and it's created the new tiddler. I don't need this link, so I'm just going to delete that. And I'll say OK there. Now, where did it go? Well, if I go here to lo and type Logie in the search, I can see that it's actually made one as a tiddler somewhere called Logie House. And there it is. And there's the picture. So it pulled it out and moved it to its own place. Now, Logie House was developed with Thornton's Pyro 2 Bath. And I want to make a record of that in this tiddler. So I'm going to go to Edit, and I'm going to go down here to Returns, and I'm going to create a new tiddler. Called Thornton's Pyro 2 Bath. When I click the tick box, now I can see the picture and underneath the developer that I used to develop it with. And you can see it's in italics because it doesn't exist yet. So let's create that. Oh, before I move on, I nearly forgot again. I need to tag this photograph, don't I? So that it will appear in my list of photographs. So let's click that to tag it. And click the tick box. And now I'm going to click the Thornton Pyro 2 bath. Now it doesn't exist yet, so it comes up with this missing tiddler message. And by going into edit, it's going to create the tiddler for Thornton Pyro 2 bath. Now in here, I would love to see the formula. So here it is. I typed it up earlier so I could just paste it in. Now if I click the tick box again, it's created it, looks very neat. And let's just talk about how I made this table. Because tables are very useful in TiddlyWiki, especially for a photography one where you might be wanting to put some formulas in, like this. So I'll go back to edit and we'll have a look at this closely. So the table is comprised of these vertical pipe symbols. And this is how you create the tables. So you put a vertical line and then what you want to go in the table, followed by a vertical line. I'm going to create one quickly for you so you can actually see how to make it. And to make it even easier for you to see it, this, there's another very useful button here, which allows you to view what your tiddler would look like when you've finished editing it. So I'm going to click that, and on the right-hand side, we can see what it looks like. So after my BT Paraketchen 2 bath heading, I'm going to start creating the table. So first of all, one pipe symbol, space, then I'm going to put the name of that heading, and it's going to be two columns. 
So I'm going to put a space and then another pipe. So there's basically two columns there, but only the first column has got text in it. And the second column has just got a space. And on the right hand side, we can see it starting to build up. On the next line, I'm going to start putting the chemical and the amount. So pipe symbol, space, space, pipe symbol, amount. And it's starting to build up now into a table look on the right hand side. Before I go any further, I want to show you a common error building tables. And that is putting a space after the pipe symbol on the line above. Now, if I put a space there now, watch what happens on the right hand side. It breaks the table look. It's now no longer working because of this space. It's as easy as that to make a mistake. So if you do get this kind of effect and you're not getting a table like you wanted, you've probably got some spaces in there accidentally. I'm going to delete that and it goes back to normal again. Let's add the next line. There's the next line, the pyrocatechin. I would like the chemicals to be left justified in the table. And that's very easy to do. At the moment, between these pipe symbols, I've got spaces, look, on each side. If I delete the left-hand space, it becomes left justified. Did you see it jump over then? I'll add a space again, and it center justifies. And if I deleted the right-hand space after pyrocatechin, it right justifies. So that's how you can get your entries in your tables to align. I like left justified like that. So that's how to create tables, and you just continue and so on. Let's delete that because I've already got this information already in this tiddler down here. Now below this, I've got some interesting text bullet points of things I want to remember about using this developer. Now to create bullet points, you use a asterisk sign. So if I put asterisk space, you can see on the right it creates a bullet point. So let's edit these and create bullets. And there we have it. Now, if I go and click this tick box now, we'll see what it looks like when I come out of edit mode. Very useful indeed. Now, wouldn't it also be useful if I could see which photographs pointed at Thornton Pyro 2 bath, i.e. which photographs I developed in this developer? Well, I can see which photographs do that by looking at the backlinks. Now, a backlink is a way of seeing what points to a tiddler. So if I drop this down, this menu here, and I open the info panel, I have some tabs along here. And here, one of these tabs is backlink. Let's click that. And here I can see which photographs point to this developer. So Logie House, which is exactly the one we created the pointer to that developer or the link to that developer with. Let's add this same link to the castle rig photograph and see if we then see two backlinks pointing to Thornton's Pyro. So down here we have the castle rig. I'm going to, going to edit. I'm going to add a link. And there's the link. Now if we go back to Thornton 2 bath and we open up info, we can see under backlinks two photographs now point to this developer. So we can start to see which photographs were developed with this developer. Very useful as we build up our library of photographs in our journal. Of course, these are real links. You can click on them and jump straight to the photograph that points to that developer. Very useful indeed. Now, sometimes we want to be able to see this all the time. And there's two ways to do that. 
I could, if I wanted, have the info button available all the time up here. To do that, we just drum this down, go to info, go to tools, and under tools you'll see the info button is available and I can turn it on by ticking that box there and look it's appeared in this button system along every tiddler. So if I go to another tiddler you'll see it's available there, look it's there already. I can click it and look at backlinks. But I like another way of doing this. I prefer to see my backlinks at the bottom of every tiddler. That way, whenever I open one up, it's instantly there which other tiddlers point to this one. And if you think about it, that's how your brain works. When you look at something or you're thinking about something, all of these connections are visible in your mind. You see connections to things that build up that information. When I think of cooked breakfast, I have connections to baked beans, to tomatoes, to bacon, to eggs. You see what's happening? I built up in my mind all these connections. When I think about an egg, I think of f frying it. I think of cracking an egg. I think of an eggshell. I think of a chicken. It's a link, a backlink, if you like, in my mind. Everything is connected to everything else, and that's how our brains work. And so we need this particular photo journal to work that way too. Now in order to be able to see my backlinks along the bottom here, I need to add a special tiddler, which isn't normally available. We're going to create it right now. So I'm going to click the plus button, and I'm going to create a tiddler called backlinks. And I need to tag this with a very special tag. And this tag makes this tiddler show on every other tiddler. It's part of the viewing template of all my tiddlers. So to do that, I need to tag it with this. Dollar colon slash tags slash and then view template. And see how I capitalized view and template like that. If I hit return, that's created this tag on this backlinks. Now on the inside of this, I want to be able to create a list of any tiddler that has a link to the current tiddler that this is showing on. So to do that, I have a special bit of code. I'm going to copy it and paste it in here. I'm going to put this on my website so you can copy it into your own photographic journal. But by doing this, I now have the ability to see links underneath. So let's close that up. And under Logie House, I can see no tiddlers linked to this. Nothing links to Logie House. Fair enough. But Thornton 2 Bath, we know that a couple of things link to that. So let's have a look at Thornton 2 Bath. And there they are. Look, Castle Rig and Logie House. They both point to this developer. Let's make Castle Rig point to Logie House. I'll edit it. I'll add a link to Logie House. And there's the link. If I go up to Logie House, and I can see now underneath, it's automatically showing a backlink. Castle Rig points to this. This is really useful. This is how to start connecting all your information together. And by doing that, you're creating this second brain. You're creating this ability to open up a developer and see straight away what connects to that developer. I'm going to leave you with that. We've covered excising a tiddler, basically pulling information out of one tiddler and creating a new one out of that information. We've looked at how to create links between two tiddlers. We've seen how to make tables so that we can put developer formulas in or any other information that you need to put in in a table form. And we've also looked at backlinks, two ways to see backlinks, either from the information, looking at that tab, or by adding our special backlinks tiddler which is part of the view template so that we can see at the bottom of every piece of information we have what points to it. I hope that's useful to you. You've got everything now that you need to make a really valuable and effective photographic journal.
I want to thank everybody for watching. I want to thank my patrons. And I will see you next week.